Um, okay, so hello everyone. My name is Oleg. I'm uh, application architect at SoftServe, and um, like I, I usually I do speeches which are cross-platform, but Recently, I had a very good case with Android Work Manager, and this is the thing that I would like to share with you. Uh, can you, can somebody of you let me know if you have already worked with Android Work Manager? Okay. Um, I see the message out there in chat. Okay, uh, Voldemar Nikichuk has already worked as Android Work Manager. Okay, um, so yeah, um, the thing we use Android Work Manager for was the analytics, uh, because on the project we have, there, this is not allowed to use analytics uh, provided by Firebase Analytics, um, Amplitude, uh, and etc. So there was a request from customers to implement uh, our own analytics system. And um, analytics should be sent um, in different manner. Doesn't matter what happens with the device, and uh, they should work with some constraints, etc., etc., etc. So we know a lot of stuff um, around the background uh, and multi-threading work in Android. But as we find out that there is a cool thing called Android Work Manager, I've heard about it before, but I didn't get a chance to work with it deeply. So um, we actually used it for this analytical stuff. And the funny thing is that one of the cases that, um, on the cases that Google actually recommends to use Android, Android Work Manager for is to use it for analytics or establishing connections with server, meaning like sending pings and receiving them back. Um, so yeah, let's proceed. First of all, um, like I'll do some, small introduction to multi-threading because we may have people with different experience and maybe some of you have forget something. So uh, how the Android works in general. So we know that we have the main thread, we have the message queue, which receives all the messages from all the threads and it sends the appropriate message to the appropriate looper. So if you have only the single thread out there, which is the main thread, uh, all the messages are sent to the, to the main thread. And in such case, you might receive stuff like uh, network operations on the main thread exception, et cetera, because the message queue is sending it by default to the main thread. That's why you have to create a separate thread and do some networking or high CPU operations on the separate thread. Um, you can use different solutions and they are already well known and probably a lot of you have used them. So uh, these are handlers. Uh, we had uh, a case in the previous project that uh, um, we had a rule which was the rule of fifty dollars uh, is that if uh, if a new handler is used without any particular reason then in such case um, and like without argumenting documenting it and so on but just like write a new handler and do some stuff and that's it um, that that guy has to put into the uh, into the common bucket fifty dollars because of using that um, we know that we have the async tasks, which are already kind of deprecated. Uh, we have default Java threads, runnables, and different executors. Of course, we have a lot of API on top of it, like cyclic barriers, countdown latches, fog joint framework, and so on and so forth. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, passed the um, Java, uh, Java professional uh, exam, um, this, this is the thing that you will learn a lot. Uh, out there, so this is like Java concurrency. Uh, pay, uh, pay big attention to this. We can use default Android services. Uh, usually, services run in the main thread, but you can specify: is it the background service? Is it the foreground service? Is it the bound service? I'm talking here about both like default services and intent services. So this is also the thing that you you can send work to. It will do this work on the set, on the thread that you specify, and uh, and after that will proceed some outcome. Um, usually it is common after Android Marshmallow to use jobs and job scheduler uh, because you can specify some uh, chunks of work uh, which are called jobs and uh, you can be more, uh, more kind of uh, better in designing your solutions when you work with jobs because you can like tell it this is the 
image resize job, is it is the upload job, it is parsing job, and so on. And uh, because of job scheduler, you can uh, you know like you, you can proceed with different um, different workflows at the end. Um, there were loaders and loader manager. They were usually um, used for content providing um, inside the application between applications. Uh, they were deprecated in Android 28 um, because of the work manager. And also there is download manager. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that a lot of people heard about it, but it is used for a high intensive um, HTTP downloading stuff. So if you have uh, probably uh, some of you have played games and usually when you uh, when you launch the game for the first time, uh, it says like downloading content, please turn off your uh, turn on your Wi-Fi because we don't want to download it via the uh, LTE and so on and so forth. So the world manager is used to download some content and resources and 3D models, whatever you want. Um, Right now, uh, what is proposed by, by Google, uh, whenever you want to run whatever background task, uh, is to use uh, this small diagram. So if you want uh, your work to be executed at some point and, um, and you want to make it reliable, or you want to synchronize stuff on some specific uh, periods, like every one hour you want to just synchronize the user data with the server, uh, like back and forth, you should use Work Manager. Um, of course, if uh, this is not the um, device triggered event, you need some uh, notification to be received, usually the silent notification. It can be changes to API remote config, for example, in the same Firebase. Um, it can be an Amazon uh, simple notification service or whatever you will decide. So something has to trigger it. Um, so you should like combine stuff with Work Manager. If you uh, want to make sure that your task will be executed no matter what it happening is happening on the device, like even if it is one percent, uh, even if it has one percent of the battery, right now uh, you should use the foreground service. Um, because the foreground service is the one that will live forever. It is draining battery. Users usually com complain about such, such stuff, but sometimes you just have you just have to make sure that your work will be executed no matter what is happening. And it should be executed right now, right here, and uh, it shouldn't be uh, any way interrupted. Of course, it should be interrupted by internet connection, etc. cetera, but uh, the foreground service itself will, will continue working. Or if you want to execute, uh, at the exact time, um, you have to wake up your device, um, like um, alarms and uh, so on. You should use Alarm Manager. Otherwise, do not do background tasks. Because the any multi-threading that you are doing uh, is usually uh, very error prone, uh, no matter even if you use uh, modern frameworks or um, even if you use already stable stuff like Rx and so on. You shouldn't do the groundwork if you do not have to. So if you have to parse simple JSON or XML, just don't do the background work. You can do it freely on the main thread. Um, so as I remember, every on draw is called every 16 milliseconds uh, in Android. So uh, in such case, you have 16 milliseconds to execute your work. And usually it is enough for some uh, small amount of time. Are there, are there any questions right there at this moment? Okay, so Android Work Manager, it is part of Android Jetpack and Android Jetpack has a lot of stuff in it like navigation and, um, and other cool things. You can explore it more deeply uh, on the Android developers. Some takeaways, so this is kind of the thing that I would like you to understand uh, about the Work Manager. Uh, and if you will remember this thing, it will be enough um, after this presentation. So first of all, Work Manager will work on every device. Uh, well, I would say on nine from 10 devices because we don't know like what device um, vendors will decide to, uh, to manufacture next time. But we have tested uh, our solution on different devices. We had uh, uh, Huawei, which is like the, I, I found that this is the proper pronunciation of Huawei, this is Huawei. 
uh, Huawei, Xiaomi, um, Cobalt, Samsung, uh, Pixels, etc. So Work Manager worked on all of them and all on all of Android uh, versions, which is which it supports, and it supports starting from um, from uh, Android four and until the current Android version. Uh, starting uh, like from Android four to Android M. Uh, which is Android 6, uh, it, works, uh, it works as a broadcast receiver plus alarm manager. So what it actually does, it, um, I will show it later, but in, in, uh, in short, it, um, it creates some broadcast receiver out there, which will be triggered at the specified, uh, uh, which, is, which will be triggered by alarm at the specified time, and then the work will be executed. Uh, so this is the combination of uh, components it is used. It, it used, but um, after Android M, it is job scheduler with jobs. Uh, so like, if you don't want to combine those things in your application and you want to support all of the versions specified here, you can use Android Work Manager. Uh, it has constraints. Um, you can specify them. An example that your device should be plugged into the um, to the voltage and you have to uh, like or you have to have the network connectivity or you need um, some extra things so there is a lot of constraints i won't go through all of them but uh, you can take a look at the uh, at the android documentation it has two two ways of scheduling tasks this uh, one off tasks uh, so this kind of if you have to specify high load uh, hcp operation example parsing pretty big json etc you can schedule one off task or you just have to make a request to the server uh, or so on and if you need to do some stuff like synchronization or analytics like we did in our application uh, we used it as a periodic tasks it has task chaining uh, this is not a new feature but um, it is built in kind of the builder manner that you can uh, that you continue that like you can specify start work with this job then do this job then this job and etc etc so uh, again you can you can specify the workflow your user should go through and you can um, you can send results depending on the uh, task that was run so like you can show some progress stuff um, you can um, you know update your UI or whatever and continue this thing Android Work Manager is not killable, which means that uh, even if your application is killed, um, your job will be executed. Uh, even if the device has restarted, uh, your application, your work uh, will be executed. And uh, it is it makes the Android Work Manager very, very reliable uh, because, like, for example, iOS doesn't have such ability to. Uh, to in the proper way to schedule a job uh, after the device restarts. Of course, we can like set up the iBeacon and wake up the device, etc. But these are actually workarounds and hacks that like are not recommended. But still, uh, having the proper way of uh, reliable work to be done uh, is always a good point. So this is like the work manager stuff. So supports every version. You can specify conditions different tasks, chaining, and it is unkillable. So um, the work manager consists of main five parts. Uh, there is the worker factory, which is actually which actually creates of workers. Uh, workers are your um, are your, like the single component of task, like your single task that you have to execute. So if you need upload stuff, you say upload worker. If you need the load, there is the load worker. If you need to sync, there is sync worker. So you can create whatever workers you want to. And worker factory is actually responsible for creating these workers. It receives context and some parameters, which actually uh, which is actually a data bundle. And uh, it uh, accepts all the default uh, bundles, like um, primitive strings, parcelables, and serializables. If you want to specify uh, extra stuff, uh, I will show you later in the in the small example. If you, for example, need to specify some uh, repository, data store, or manager to your worker, you can still do this, and I will show it later. There is a work manager which actually creates, um, which actually like should be initialized, and uh, after that, like worker factory knows that it can create workers for you, 
And work manager also schedules and enqueues your workers. So you specify which worker work manager should uh, execute uh, and or should build a chain from and etc. Um, there is a work request. Work request is actually the um, periodic or one-off uh, or one-time uh, worker. Uh, and uh, work info, this is the statistics and other information about how worker is doing. So what is the status of the worker? Uh, what is the um, result uh, of, of the job? What is the progress? And so on and so forth. So uh, like probably it was two months ago that we were implementing the Android Work Manager in our application. Um, it was like 2.2 version of Work Manager. Um, of Android Work Manager, now it is like 2.3. They're constantly improving it. They're adding more uh, stuff to you, like having the progress inside to not um, to not produce your own components, which might not be which which might not work that well with uh, worker architecture and so on. And here is the actual like statuses uh, worker. So usually when you schedule the worker it becomes blocked by default, which means that it waits for the next um, next um, cycle in order to be queued into this workers queue. And after that, uh, when it is in queued, it waits for some, uh, for some conditions. Um, when, when all the conditions are met, when all like the time is specified, network connectivity and so on, or if there's one time we should run right away, it will go from enqueued right to the running part. If running fails, you can always retry it and do it again. Um, and from the running, it can either, but and afterwards, like you decide what is with the result of this running. So workers, but it don't worker by its own doesn't know if it is failed or succeeded. So you actually have to return the result from the worker. Like, does it succeed or does it fail? And depending on that result, you can schedule another worker and so on and so forth. And at any time here, you can cancel the workers. And canceling was added to enjoy, uh, to Work Manager uh, 2.3 and the graceful uh, handling of this canceled status. Any questions here? Okay, let's proceed next. So task chaining is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and this is how like you should usually do use your workers. So you have to make it uh, pretty clear what workers should do. Um, so if it is like filter image, uh, you call it filtering worker, then you call it compress worker, then you call it upload worker. So do not, do not call it like whatever worker one, worker two, worker three. And because if you know, doesn't mean that it should, uh, it, it will work for everyone. Also, you can specify for every worker different constraints um, right here. So you can select, uh, you can check whether the uh, battery is fine. So we can do some high intensive work. If we have uh, the storage capacity out there in order to store the device, there is another constraint. And if we have that connectivity, we can upload it, uh, the worker. And this, this makes sure that you can gracefully understand at which point, in example, your worker fails. So if in, you can even divide um, your, uh, your task into multiple team members, for example, uh, when uh, any, of your team, any of your team members have uh, set up the infrastructure for the workers, uh, custom work factory, if you need such a uh, work manager uh, is, is initialized, then you can um, actually uh, decompose your task into three workers and ask every team member, like you have to implement filtering worker, you have to do this and that. And uh, any of your team members can, uh, like the, the first person can just create the placeholders for each workers and then the job can be paralleled, which will improve the um, overall time and delivery of your, uh, of your solution in the future. So um, there's the work request I was talking about. Uh, I mean, like how it works under the need. So like, how the hell the work manager knows that it has to execute some workers after the device restarts. This because happening on the database. So usually uh, anywhere at your application, no matter from what thread, um, you, you schedule your workers. It is recommended to schedule it on the main thread because this is not like some high, uh, high CPU work to do. Uh, but you can do it from any thread, but please make sure that you will handle uh, your multi-threading gracefully out there. 
So like rule of thumb, do not do this from the background thread, do it on like scheduling workers on the main thread. So you create the work request, which is one time a periodic request. You um, enqueue it with the work manager and inside Android has the internal task executor, which will actually like do this thing. So it has this like executor is uh, working with this blocked and enqueued statuses. After that, uh, when it has the worker inside, which means that it knows that there is such worker, it actually um, stores it in the, bad, in the database for the very first time. Uh, so even if constraints are not met, it will store it into database. For example, you just scheduled the worker and device has shut down. It will already uh, be in the database and when the device restarts uh, and turns on again, uh, internal task executor will pull off the worker from the database, will check the constraints, uh, network storage, etc., and will ask the worker factory to create a worker from these parameters and from this um, general information to create a worker for you. And after that, the worker will be executed. So there is like in work manager, there are different executors. Um, um, I cannot tell exactly which one. I assume that this is probably the underneath there's a cache, uh, uh, cache uh, thread executors because it can expand to whatever amount you want to and probably they are handling it somehow gracefully. So I haven't uh, dig deep that into the details uh, inside of it. But also you can specify, um, you can specify a lot of your own configuration if you want to in these executors. And after that, when everything happens, uh, the worker, uh, if it was the one time uh, when it is like pulled off from database, it is removed from here. If it is periodic, it still stays here, uh, but it is marked that it is currently uh, executing and it is running. So this is kind of the, the general thing in order to not execute the same worker at the same time. And the period of checking this database is uh, 15 minutes and I will talk about it later. Any questions over here about the underneath work? Great. So uh, a couple of constraints uh, to consider. First of all, the worker will uh, work in periodic stuff uh, only once in 15 minutes. So you cannot schedule workers to work any F, like every 30 seconds or every minute. Even if you will set up um, the time for it, it will um, it will show you that the delay is set to to fifteen minutes. So if you need periodic work to run every second for some reason, uh, you should consider some some different well known things that we already have. So is it um, the spread? Uh, is it the async task or whatever? So you can use different things, uh, but if you if you really need something to, to work for one minute, maybe you need uh, a worker that will retry itself uh, and will like have a long falling mechanism, etc. But it still depends on your um, uh, depends on uh, actually on your uh, behavior and your application. So if in order to show you, uh, so what is actually um, about the workers? Uh, so this is like the one time uh, worker here. Can you see my Android Studio actually? Just in case. Yep. Okay, great. So uh, this is the one time workers uh, and this is like the work manager specified here. If you need the periodic work, um, we will have a periodic, periodic worker, which is um, periodic work request builder and you can specify here the, the worker you need to. And uh, periodic work request builder. And here, like you need to specify some duration. Um, like even if you specify it like this, uh, I'm sure we should like receive the duration stuff already. Yeah. Duration, probably this was added in 2.3 because before it just like had specified the second. So if you like need to run it every day over here, uh, it, it will like continue running every single day, like to identify the, uh, the, the thing you need to. Uh, if you need to add some constraints to the worker, um, there are like, uh, there is like work specification which uh, contains all of these constraints. Um, 
and uh, the, the, in order to create your own work specifications, you need to specify a lot of things over here. Um, but like this is not the details we want we want right now. The work manager, uh, when I talk about like chaining request, here is begin with whatever worker, and then you can uh, you can continue. Let's let's have like this example. You have the worker, and you have this then do worker, and then do worker, and and so on and so forth. So this is how uh, how generally you specify the the chaining of the workers. Um, other things I would like to talk about. If you need your custom worker factory, uh, you just like over you just extend from the default worker factory here, and it has the uh, create worker the single method uh, which can be actually extended and by default it receives um, the class name parameters and contacts uh, here i have created the worker using the reflection however you can just like check the worker class name and here you can just do like like this if you want to and then validate um, or you can have the uh, like the check depending on your um, depending on your uh, class type itself. So if you will at some point, for example, we have the my worker here. If at some point we'll refactor this one, um, so you, you make sure that uh, your worker factor works gracefully. And here also, um, I want to show like how to pass the parameters inside inside the worker because by default if you extend from the worker it receives only two parameters here so you can either specify it uh specify it like this or you can have the parameter inside of it so there is um i don't know like let, let's have some some object here that we want to pass and you, you can do it just like in lazy stuff um so without having like when you will check for the class name, you can just have uh, instance equals my worker and pass here the, con the app context, uh, pass the worker parameters and pass your object. So this one will also work yeah. because it's final. So in, in this case, this will also work, but it depends on how like, how it improves your readability and how you want to uh, how you want to handle the workers creation. So this is how like when you want to when when you pass some additional stuff like managers, um, uploaders, and whatever objects like depositors, etc. Okay, and like by the way, here is how to return the result. Um, so if it is like you can use also the coroutines if it is the um, if it is the Kotlin, and uh, to, in order to suspend execution here in the get and gracefully return the result depending on another background work that should happen. So you can do a lot of things here. Let's return back to other constraints. The second constraint is that usually uh, there is only a single workers factory, uh, which means that. Um, at the beginning, uh, you, you have to specify like which factory to use. You can use the default factory, or you can specify your own factory and then inject it somewhere uh, in order to be used. Um, the thing is uh, that like which can which can be used is at the run in runtime. You can uh, specify uh, which factory to create in order to create your workers. Uh, so in order to not have one big factory which receives a lot of params and makes a lot of decision, uh, you can have an extra factory of creation of such factories in the runtime, or you can specify different strategies depending on your job. Um, and I'm talking about like very big um, conditionals in the create worker method of the worker factory. The third constraint uh, about the work manager is that it actually, um, well, this is not the API itself because API, um, I think, is pretty much enough for now in order to be used gracefully. Uh, is the documentation uh, like is pretty basic? It is on the on the developer's website. 
it shows some stuff, but for example, how to uh, combine workers and factories and work manager with uh, dependency injection frameworks like uh, Coin or Dagger, or, or if you want to do some custom things like have your own um, work manager executor, uh, and uh, or either you want to specify your own thread executor to the work manager in order to like have no more than three workers uh, working at the same time. You have to dig deeper and probably invent it on your own and then uh, write a very great article on the medium or, or somewhere else for other people. And also this will help you to become the Google, uh, uh, yeah, the Google developer. Uh, I mean, the Google expert. The next steps here. So basically, this is like general introduction to Android work manager. Uh, if there are any questions, we can like proceed right now with, uh, with steps and uh, with some examples if you want to. Uh, but I left all the things that I found related to um, Android manager useful during our implementation. Um, so you can just like work with this with Android uh, 2.3. There were added uh, Rx Java workers and Rx, uh, no, Rx Java Kotlin whatever workers and Coroutine worker. Uh, it was added in the 2.3. Um, also, there are like um, combining work manager with your own um, database. Um, for example, if you want to store it also on your own, and etc. So you, these are the next steps, and I highly recommend to walk through all of them and. Um, while I was uh, on, on the on the holidays, uh, I mean like the winter holidays, I tried to implement the working manager on my own. Uh, I mean like having this POC which will use all our manager and uh, broadcast receiver for uh, for Android uh, from four to uh, Android six and the JavaScript do in the later version. Well, un -work, one worker did work for others. I didn't have time. I mean, like had, having all this database storage, etc. I just stored it in the shared preferences, information about workers, and it worked just fine. So I have like this home task for you, just to practice and um, and remember um, all like all default APIs used in Android, like our manual. Our manager and job schedule because usually we have a lot of fancy stuff like Android Work Manager, and I would recommend you to uh, play with default Android APIs in order to understand how it works under, underneath. Um, are there any questions so far, right now? Yes, I have a question. Do you yep. hear me? Yep. Yep. Here. Uh, okay. So, how to force Work Manager to execute its task? Uh, for example, while using job scheduler, we can define an ID for uh, our job service. And mm -hmm. later, we can force this job to run using a adb command. I can post the command in the chat. Um, yep. But the problem mm -hmm. is, uh, as far as I know, there is no way to, do, to define such ID for uh, work manager's work requests. Therefore, I'm wondering if there is another way to force a job to be run. Well, actually, um, the fun thing is that uh, if, if, you, if you go to, actually the, like, the work uh, manager uses job scheduler underneath, so you can force the task uh, as you specified here. And there is a thing in, in queue in work manager is that you can enqueue unique work. And in unique work, actually, uh, like you have the unique work name, which is your job ID, and you have some policies, which is like constraints, etc. So, like I'll leave it just like this, and uh, you have your worker. So basically, uh, I can use this job ID uh, to yes. force my job to be run. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes, because underneath it is job scheduler. If you will try like to run this uh, thing on the Android pre am I'm not sure what will happen because mm -hmm. like you are trying to run the job which is not working for the Android M. Probably there is in, there is created some intent with this work name, I think in Android pre am I mean Android four till six. But you can try like what happened. I haven't tried to run uh, a job scheduler job. Uh, on this stuff, 
but yeah uh, but um on others you can just do like like you have pasted here in the in the chat so you can do the same thing with this job id okay um actually i know this will work because usually uh job service has id and attack so I suppose this job ID, I mean, this unique work name is just a tag, but we need an ID to use it in that command I posted in the chat. Well, let's, let's go into the details here. We have the name. And what is the name? Okay, we don't have here the understanding what is the name. Yeah, that the problem because Google they didn't provide any way how to actually debug uh, work manager. Well, actually they do. Actually they do. Uh, if you really? go to yes, if you go to work manager Android, um, here they have the topic which is debugging how to guide debugging work manager. So like there are logging stuff here is like as i mentioned you can use jobs controller and have all of your stuff here if you want to debug mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah so um the, and also like testing the work manager is also pretty straightforward i mean like uh, there are dummy uh, mock workers if you want to unit test them uh, of course, all of these are integration tests as working manager is using context, but uh, you can also test if your worker has it or not, and whether it's result, what the result expect, expect, and so on. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so basically, this is it. Um, I will also provide this thing, uh, I mean, this presentation uh, for you. Uh, let, let, me, let me just like, do, do like this, because it will be faster. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, I thought it will copy the links, but it does not. Select the link. You, you want to okay let's let's go let's go like 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 okay i know what i will do i will do like this for you and then you can, you can proceed um the presentation will be um in the conference like in an hour uh, so you can check all of this stuff and i highly recommend you to play with such kind of things um maybe uh, some people you didn't even try to uh like uh alarm manager at, at any point of your uh, professional lifetime so it is always uh, good to play with, with the things because they are used for different purposes and that's it here is my email and you can find me via my my username uh, anywhere at softser if you have any Questions, comments, write me, uh, write me in Teams. Uh, usually I reply like in a couple of minutes if I'm not on meeting. Uh, probably this is it. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice Tuesday.